Once in a small town, there lived a boy named Jed. Jed was known for two things, his boundless imagination and a peculiar habit of destroying every toy he owned when his family wasn't watching. His collection included action figures, stuffed animals, and building blocks, but none were safe from his destructive tendencies. To Jed, they were just things uh, until one fateful day. In his room, surrounded by the remains of his toys, lay his favorite, a soft, plush kitty named Whiskers. Whiskers had been with Jed since he was a baby, always offering comfort and companionship. Little did Jed know, Whiskers and the other toys were alive, capable of feeling pain and fear just like him. One evening, as the moonlight filtered through Jed's window, something extraordinary happened. The toys gathered in a secret council meeting, their stitched faces serious. We can't let him keep destroying us, said Whiskers his button eyes narrowing. We need to teach him a lesson. So, the toys devised a plan. They would haunt Jed's dreams, making him face the consequences of his actions. That night, as Jed drifted into sleep, the toys sprang to life. They crept closer, whispering truths about their lives, reminding him of all the joy they once brought him. In his dreams, they transformed into shadowy figures, mocking him, showcasing their damaged parts of the missing limbs. The stains, and the torn fabrics are all remnants of his reckless behavior. Jed, you've hurt us. They cried in unison. We trusted you. The next day, Jed woke up with a feeling of dread in his stomach. He had never seen Whiskers so upset. What's wrong, Whiskers? He asked, but the plush kitty remained silent, eyes turned away. As the day wore on, Jed noticed strange things happening around him. Whenever he tried to play with his remaining toys, they would ignore him, sulking away as if they were plotting something. The once bright colors of his room seemed duller, and his laughter faded into silence. Then, Jed's neighbor, a boy named Max, came over. Max was everything Jed was not a kind, respectful, and gentle with his toys. What's wrong, Jed? Max asked, noticing his friend's glum demeanor. I don't know. My toys just won't play with me anymore, Jed replied his voice barely a whisper. Max frowned. You should treat your toys with respect. They have feelings too, you know. Jed rolled his eyes but couldn't shake the uneasy feeling growing inside him. That night, he was jolted awake by whispers echoing in his room. The toys, led by whiskers, surrounded his bed. It's time to tell the truth, Jed. They urged. You need to face what you've done. No, I didn't mean to. Jed shouted. Tears streaming down his cheeks. I just wanted to have fun. Fun shouldn't come at the cost of others. Whiskers replied. You need to tell your parents the truth and donate all your toys. Especially me. It's the only way we can stop this pain. Reluctantly, Jed agreed. The next morning, he gathered his courage and confessed to his parents about everything. They were shocked and disappointed. Jed, we trusted you to take care of your toys. We never expected this. His dad said sternly. As punishment, Jed was grounded for a month and faced a painful lesson. His dad, believing in the importance of discipline, gave him a firm spanking, emphasizing the need to take responsibility for his actions. Afterward, Jed sat in his room, feeling miserable. He knew he had hurt his toys and that they deserved better. With his parents' help, he gathered all his toys and donated them to a local charity, including Whiskers, who had been his constant companion. As he placed Whiskers in the donation box, he felt a pang of sadness. I'm sorry, Whiskers, he whispered, tears in his eyes. I promise I'll change. To his surprise, as he closed the box, he heard a soft voice from within. We forgive you, Jed. Just remember, toys are friends, not just playthings. With a heavy heart, Jed left the box at the charity vowing to treat his belongings with respect from that day forward. He learned a valuable lesson about kindness, empathy, and the importance of honesty, not just to others, but to himself. Though he had lost his favorite plush kitty, Jed gained something far more valuable, a newfound understanding of love and respect for the things and beings around him. And from that day forward, he became a better friend to his toys and to Max, who showed him that true fun is about cherishing what you have not destroying it. Title, Dax's Christmas Redemption. Once upon a time, 
In a cozy little town dusted with snow, there lived a mischievous boy named Dax, with tousled hair and a cheeky grin. Dax was notorious for his pranks and playful tricks. But this Christmas, his antics had gone too far. He was at the very top of Santa's naughty list, and the holiday season was rapidly approaching. One snowy December night, while Dax was busy plotting his next prank a hiding a fake snake in his sister's stocking a he heard a faint jingling sound outside. Curiosity peaked. He peeked out the window to find Santa's sleigh parked on the snow-covered street, reindeer resting nearby. In an unexpected turn of events, Santa Claus himself was standing there, his eyes twinkling with disappointment. Dax, Santa said, his voice warm but firm. I've come to give you a choice. You can either change your ways and start spreading joy this Christmas, or you'll have to spend a holiday in Christmas jail. Dax laughed, thinking it was a joke. Christmas jail? What's that? You can't just throw me in a cell for being naughty. But Santa shook his head. This isn't a punishment, Dax. It's a chance for you to reflect on your behavior and learn to be a nicer person. If you can't change by New Year's Eve. You'll remain in Christmas jail until you do. With the flick of his wrist, Santa conjured a bright portal, and before Dax could protest, he found himself standing in a cozy room filled with twinkling lights and cheerful decorations. It was Christmas Gal, a magical place where naughty children learned the true spirit of Christmas. There were no bars or chains, just soft pillows and a big, fluffy bed. Dax looked around, slightly annoyed but curious. As the days went by, he spent time with other kids who were also in Christmas jail. Some were there for small mischief, like sneaking extra cookies, while others had more serious reasons, like being mean to others. They all had one thing in common. They wanted to get out and enjoy Christmas. At first, Dax tried to maintain his naughty persona. He played tricks on the other kids, but instead of laughter, he was met with frowns and sadness. One day. While he was plotting to hide the last slice of gingerbread pie, he overheard a girl named Mia talking about how she missed her family. I just wanted to see them open their presents, she sighed, tears in her eyes. Dax felt a pang in his heart. It was the first time he thought about how his actions affected others. He remembered how excited he felt when he got gifts and how it felt to share moments with his family during the holidays. That night, Dax lay awake in bed. Reflecting on his behavior, he realized he wanted to feel that joy again, not just for himself but for others too. So, he decided to change. The next day, he joined the other kids in decorating the Christmas jail with handmade ornaments. They strung popcorn on garlands and crafted paper snowflakes, filling the room with laughter and creativity. Dax even helped Mia make a special card for her family. As Christmas Eve approached, Dax's heart filled with warmth as he saw how happy everyone was. They sang carols together, played games, and even made gifts for their families. Dax discovered the joy of giving and how good it felt to spread happiness. On New Year's Eve, Santa returned to check on Dax and the other kids. He smiled as he saw the transformation. I see you've learned your lesson, Dax. You've spread kindness and joy this Christmas. With a twinkle in his eye, Santa waved his hand and the magical portal opened again. You're free to go home, but remember, Christmas spirit is something to carry with you all year long. Dax stepped through the portal, a new boy filled with gratitude and excitement. He rushed home to embrace his family, eager to share the lessons he learned. From that day on, he made it his mission to be kind and spread joy, ensuring that he would never find himself on Santa's naughty list again. And so, every Christmas thereafter, Dax remembered his time in Christmas Gal, cherishing the spirit of the season in his heart all year long.